Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of the Major Region Rundown. Today we're going to be going through the LPL. Now these videos again serve as information pieces to keep you up to date if you haven't been watching the LPL. Snappy, quick, strengths and weaknesses, what you can expect from the team and where they are now compared to where they were last year. Let's start with LPL's first seed, the summer champions, Billy Billy Gaming. In the top lane, we have Bin. In the jungler, we have two-time MSI champion, Wei. In the mid lane, we have the golden left hand, Knight. At 80 carry, we have Elk. And at support, we have On. BLG finished top four at Worlds last year, where they lost in the semi-finals against Weibo Gaming in what was an incredibly close five-game series that was ultimately decided in a dragon fight, where Light clutched the fight to take Weibo to the finals. Following their Worlds 2023 exit, BLG brought in Knight to replace Yagao, who went to JDG with the two teams effectively swapping mid laners, and this just gave BLG even more firepower to work with. They won LPL Spring and qualified to MSI where they finished second place, losing to Genji in a 3-1 fashion where their bot lane struggled a little bit to match their Korean counterparts. Towards the end of summer, and despite relatively good results, BLG benched Shun for Wei, who added way more consistency to the team, which was much needed for the BLG roster. The veteran jungler, formerly from RNG, brought immediate results to the team. They've only lost a total of four games as a team since Wei joined. Not series, they haven't dropped a single series. BLG won LPL Summer with their new jungler in such a dominant fashion. They were not challenged at all in the playoffs and are a tier above the rest of the region at the moment. This team is one of the favorites to win Worlds. Bin is possibly the best top laner in the world right now. Knight was the MVP in Spring, and although he's had his ups and downs, he is a solid player. Elk and On are still easily one of the best bot lanes in the world, and Wei has slotted in perfectly to this roster. I gathered up some comments and insights from the Eastern fans on their perspective on BLG. The Chinese fans said that Bin is very solid and always shows up at internationals. Wei has been having great performances this split. Knight is very good, but they worry that he has a history of not showing up on the big stage. Usually, people do not give him the edge over mid laners like Faker when it comes to Worlds. Elk is solid, but people are worried about On, since he's quite inconsistent often. He's memed as the Chinese Hillisang. Overall, they think that this team has a very high skill ceiling given the right meta, and they do have the biggest chance of winning Worlds over the other LPL teams. BLG completely dominated the entire year in the LPL, but are a quite different team to what they were in Spring. The team has benched Shun in favor of Wei, which has allowed them to play a much more dynamic playstyle. Previously, BLG was an extremely bot lane focused team, but now with Wei, the team can play through all three lanes, which has unlocked their soul laners of Bin and Knight. It seems that the MSI Finals loss to Gen.G was a big turning point for BLG, as they have restructured their playstyle in order to have a better chance versus the LCK at this world. Moving on to the second seed, Top Esports, who qualified as the second seed for having the most championship points. In the top lane, we have MSI 2023 champion 369. In the jungle, world champion Tian. In the mid lane, we have the rookie of Cream. At AD carry, we have the superstar Jackie Love. And in support, we have the MSI and world champion Mako. Following a disappointing 2023 where the team didn't manage to qualify to any international event, Top Esports rebuilt around their jungler Tian and their AD carry Jackie Love and said goodbye to Rookie. The team signed 369 from JDG. 369 actually left JDG because he wanted to go home to Top Esports where he felt like he would be more comfortable. It was actually his choice to leave JDG in the first place. They then signed Cream from OMG and Mako from EDG. Now you might remember that Cream struggled a little bit in one of their series where he was playing Kaiser for OMG. In very important game deciders, it looked like he was crumbling a little bit. Mako is such an amazing pickup though, such a star player and one of the GOATs of LPL. The team is frustratingly inconsistent at times. While they've shown very high highs, like very good regular season performances, and then pushing BLG and GenG to five game series in playoffs and at MSI, they've also crashed and disappointed in moments where fans expected more of them, like when they surprisingly lost in a clean sweep to G2 in the lower bracket, or when they failed to reach LPL Summer Finals after losing to Weibo, who had some kind of miraculous run going on. This team has incredible firepower on their roster and some huge names. They have four different international champions from four different eras. Jackie Love from 2018, TN from 2019, Mako from 2021, and 369 from 2023. And Cream has seen incredible growth as a rookie this year, especially in the AD mid meta where he thrived. He was probably the best Tristana in the world. TN was the MVP of Summer Split, and most of these players are considered world class, or at least close to the best in their roles, but it seems like they never show up when it really matters. It's hard to know what to expect from top esports. Will they show up and will the performance match the names and the superstars on this roster or will they disappoint yet again? 
Again, I contacted some of the Eastern fans to get their thoughts over in China on Top Esports. They said the Top Esports might be close to BLG in strength, but they didn't make the Summer Finals, which was a huge disappointment. And even though they had a good record of beating Gen G during the Esports World Cup, they have mixed opinions. On the one hand, you have players like Jackie Love and Mako who show up on the biggest of stages. But on the other hand, you have players like Tian who have a bad history at the Worlds. And Cream is just a rookie at the end of the day. Top Esports remains one of the hardest teams to judge going into this world. On paper, the team is excellent and have elite players in every single role, but repeated underperformances in big moments have caused for a lack of confidence that the team can win when it really matters. The biggest question mark for Top Esports going into this tournament will be Tian. He has been outstanding in the LPL and was the 2024 LPL Summer Split MVP, but international fans will always remember his big chokes at Worlds in 2021 and 2022. Will Tian reclaim his international throne, or will World's Tian show up once again? Just like last year, the LPL's third seed is once again LNG. Their top laner is Zika. In the jungle, they have Weiwei from Weibo Gaming last year. In the mid lane, they have Scout. At AD Carry, they have Gala. And in support, they have Hung. Let's start by addressing the elephant in the room, which is Scout. As of right now, there are rumors that he might not be able to compete at Worlds due to an old contract dispute with his former team EDG, which would not allow him to leave China. The rumor, currently, is that JDG mid laner Yegao will be replacing him on a loan. The only roster change LNG has done this year has been the swap from Tarzan to Weiwei in the jungle. The team had a very disappointing end to their Worlds run last year, where they were absolutely demolished by T1. It's less about the fact that they lost and more so how they lost. The team just looked like it was imploding in real time and just failed to show up on the day. This year, the team really struggled in spring and finished in seventh place, but came out of the woodwork in summer to turn it all around despite no roster changes and finished second in the regular season. However, they bombed out in the playoffs, failing to win a single best of five series after being clean swept by top esports and then losing in a five game series to Weibo. With enough championship points, they qualified the regional gauntlet where they were much more convincing and they got their revenge over Weibo Gaming with a 3-0 sweep. I think without Scout, LNG is going to struggle and Yagao is not the player that they need. Scout was such a pivotal carry for this team last year and this year and I think without Scout, this team might crumble. As much as I like Yagao, I don't think he's been having the best of years and I also think he's more of a supportive player who's very good on the map rather than someone that you can rely on to single-handedly carry the game. Scout, for example, his Yone was so pivotal in some of these playoffs matches, and I just don't think Yagao can show up with those individual carry performances, and so I wonder how LNG will do at this international. If Yagao is confirmed, I think they will not perform. Again, I spoke to some of the Eastern fans, and here are some of their thoughts. I'm quoting from most of these. LNG, Zika has had some great highlights. Even though he's not that experienced, he has some new picks like Rise in the top lane. Weiwei, they think is a little bit of a downgrade on Tarzan domestically, but he's basically playing around the mid and the bot lane. Gala and Scout are insanely solid carries, but Gala's records at Worlds have not been that good. Hong, like On, is very inconsistent. People do not have high expectations on this team. Regardless of whether or not he attends though, I personally rate LNG as the worst LPL team going into Worlds. The strength of this team lies in solid macro and early game turret taking, but they also have extremely slow games and when lanes are not ahead, they struggle to find opportunities to come back into games. A lot of people will look at the fact that LNG 3-0'd Weibo, but to contextualize this, the match was played the day after Weibo played in finals, which limited the amount of prep that Weibo had going into that match. If LNG can play strong early games and get leads, they close out games well and are strong on the map. But if they don't, I could see LNG potentially not even making it out of the Swiss stage. Lastly, we have LPL's fourth seed, Weibo Gaming. In the top lane, we have Breathe. In the jungle, we have Tarzan. In the mid lane, the Tiger King of Spring, Zhaohu. At AD Carry, we have Light, and their support is former world champion Crisp. Last year, Weibo Gaming were also the LPL's fourth seed, where they surprised everyone by making a deep run to the world's finals. Coming into 2024, the top side changed, with ZDZ coming in for the Shy, who would be taking a break from competitive play, and Xiaohao would be replacing Weiwei, who went over to LNG. The team had a very disappointing spring split, finishing in 7th in the regular season and not going beyond top 6 in the playoffs, so they changed their roster once again, signing free agent Tarzan and also acquiring Breathe, formerly from RNG. In summer, they looked significantly better with a 4th place finish in the regular season, and going into playoffs, they went beyond everyone's expectations again, taking out both top esports and LNG in 5 game series to make it to the summer LPL finals, which no one would have expected, where they were then dismantled by BLG of course. The team then went into the LPL regional finals, where they were once again clean swept by LNG. 
They fought in a nail-biter five-game series to qualify as the fourth seed by beating JDG. It's so hard to know what to expect from Weibo. They've shown signs of being able to be the best team, absolute contenders to the top teams of the world at their peak, and look incredible into folding and collapsing when you least expect it and having extremely disappointing performances against some of the weaker teams. Tarzan, for me, has been an amazing standout player for them that really shifted how the team looked from spring to summer. He had a little bit of a slow start when he came in as expected as he wasn't competing during spring, but he really got into the swing of things as one of the best junglers in the LPL. He always has a tendency to look really good domestically, however, the question is can he replicate this success internationally and not repeat the 2023 happenings? Chinese fans are definitely not happy that Weibo Gaming made it to Worlds over JDG, but there's nothing they can do about it now. They say that Breathe, a lot of people on the inside, like players and coaches, gave him a lot of high praises, but his general performance doesn't meet that level. It sounds like he was doing good in scrims, but they say that he has the ability to pop off at crucial moments. Tarzan is still an incredibly good player and the best player on this team. However, the T1 and LNG series still traumatizes the fans. Xiaohu had an incredibly terrible year, but he still made it to Worlds, but Light had a great performance against JDG. The sad part is, people don't think very highly of him. They say that he's not as aggressive as some fans want him to be, and he does often lack the ability to step up in important games. In a way, Chinese fans view him and Knight as the coward, and that's the nickname that they give both of them. Crisp is very good on engage supports, he's a great shot caller, but Weibo Gaming is fourth seed for a reason. Sometimes they'll look like a bottom tier team, but sometimes they'll look like a top tier team. They're not sure which version will show up at Worlds. They also feel like their coach's drafting, Danny, can be a bit frustrating sometimes. He refuses to change anything up when they're in series, he just sticks to the same plan. The main two players to watch on Weibo are Tarzan and their 80 carry light. In the LPL, Tarzan was insane throughout most of the split with a ridiculously deep champion pool. His individual prowess throughout multiple different styles of jungling was second to none worldwide. Light, on the other hand, was a master of the meta. Not only was he solid on champions like Ezreal, MF, and Ash, but he also played Jin and Vera successfully, which was a rarity for most AD carries in summer. Overall, the team's variable performances had to do with some individually poor games from their soul laners, but not much to do with their overall playstyle. Weibo should be looking to make it out of the Swiss stage, but anything further than that will heavily be reliant on who they draw in the quarterfinals. I expect Worlds to go a little bit differently for the LPL this year than last year. Last year, all four teams of the LPL ended up making it out of Swiss, with three teams making it to semifinals. But I do believe that this year, the average level of performance will be slightly lower. That doesn't mean, though, that the LPL cannot win the tournament. I think BLG is absolutely a top three team in the world, and based on how they adapt to the meta, they could be the eventual world champions. Thank you guys for watching the Major Region Rundown on the LPL, and thank you to Dom for featuring in the video. Hopefully you're a little bit more informed on the LPL now. I will be going a lot more in-depth on these teams and players in the coming days when I do things like tier lists for teams, or player tier lists, or top players in the world. So stay tuned for that stuff, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Peace.